Welcome back to the Roadside Rescue YouTube channel. I'm Ernest and on this episode I'm going to be talking about batteries. I went on a call out the other day and saw one of the craziest batteries I've ever seen. Not only was the setup super crazy, but everything going on with it was a little bit mind-boggling as well. well. Let's hit the road and look at that and then we'll come back here and talk about how to take care of your battery. This is going to be an important episode about how to maintain your own battery and get the longest life out of it. Welcome back to the Roadside Rescue YouTube channel. I'm Ernest and I've just seen something pretty crazy. I actually can't believe what I've just seen. Uh, on this Cadillac, what is it? MRX, MP4, or something like that. Some weird acronym. Anyways, the battery setup on this car is ridiculous. There's a big issue going on, so I'm going to use this Ashtray jump starter today. I've used some of their products in the past, good brand. I got a hold of one of their new jump starters, so let's go ahead and look at this and use it on this job. I know I'm gonna need a jump starter just from what I've seen. It's gonna help me test everything out. Wow, really compact for 2,500 amps. This thing will double as a battery pack. Oh, it's got a compass built in also, that's pretty cool. It's got a boost button on the front, that's awesome. You always need a good boost button. And a built-in flashing light. All right, let's hop out anyways. I'll test this while I'm testing the car. Okay, so right off the bat, I got the battery tester hooked up and that's not getting any sort of connection or voltage. Let me show you why, because the connection's terrible. Not only that, it's dangerous. So this car was taken up to the mountain the other days and it wouldn't start afterwards. Um, I was wondering if it was a dead battery. That might be the issue. But here's the weirdest thing. Look at that positive connection just chilling unprotected. I mean, I feel like we've got some sort of protect protection with this case on the top there, but not, not even, bro. Okay, so let's get this cleaned up. Hopefully, uh, it's still a good battery. But we're going to have to clean it up to figure out. That's crazy. I've never seen it that bad with like a crusty layer on the top. All right, I got this cleaned up enough to test now. Get that on there good. Yeah, definitely a bad battery then. I've got this on the post there and we're still not getting anything. Let's see, let's just double check that this will start with this jump box. I was hoping I could test it out. That's showing us with a completely dead battery. If we, if we can start this, this jump box is great. I know I mentioned as one of the first things how compact this is. That's what I like most about it so far. Weird little positive hookup right there. Let's go ahead, there it goes, and hit that boost button. Perfectly. So that's it for this one. I've got to come back and do several things to this car, including all four brakes because the rear brakes have worn out before the front brakes somehow. So the plan is to do that, come back, and to get this battery issue fixed. I'm glad I was able to test out this Ashtray jump starter. Make sure you check out the link in the description in the pinned comment if you're interested in one. I like how it has a timer to let you know how long you have a boost. And that only took 5% battery. Nice. So the solution in this case is gonna be to uh, replace the battery. If the battery was halfway decent and would take a charge, then it would be worth trying to just get the battery to retake that charge. Man, everything in here is messed up. I don't think it's supposed to be like this at all. Uh, in this case, I already tested it again. It's still not coming up with anything, so this battery is completely dead. It's just going to need to be replaced. If not, though, I could put it on a trickle charger overnight, or you could try and charge it at an auto parts store or something like that and put it back in and see if that works. Cleaning up the connection should help 
it recharged, but obviously it wasn't able to recharge fully and doing that long enough killed the battery. All right, that battery was pretty crazy. I wasn't able to do too much right there. I actually have to go back and replace the brakes on that vehicle. The customer ordered brakes online because the rotors were pretty expensive if I got them out of, you know, just a normal parts supply store. I've been waiting about a week for that. They should be here any day, so I'll be going back down there to look at that and fix that battery for good. It's probably not gonna last too much longer, but I'll be able to clean up all that corrosion at least. Well, that brings me up to a few things I wanna talk about when it comes to maintaining your own battery. All that corrosion right there can be caused by a few different things. Something you might wanna do, and I would recommend when you get a new battery, is putting battery insulators on it. These battery insulators, black's always negative, red or green is positive. They can keep that corrosion from coming up out of the battery. When you have a battery with posts on the top, something you specifically don't wanna do is knock on it, bonk on it when you're putting that terminal onto the post, knocking it down on there. That can jiggle it just enough to separate the plastic and the metal to allow some of that acid to come up and cause corrosion. Well, maybe your battery already is prone to corrosion, or maybe you just live in an environment that's prone to corrosion, those battery insulators can really help. Now, the most important thing I would recommend you could do is a visual inspection. I would recommend uh, at least once a month when you're filling up with gas is when I recommend because you're standing around with a few minutes of time to burn anyways. Uh, pop the hood and check everything out under the hood. Do a visual inspection. Is your belt there? Is there a bunch of corrosion around your battery? Are one of the fluid reservoir is almost empty. That's a perfect time to get a look at your battery to check your oil. And that'll always keep you on top of your vehicles, not only maintenance, but the sort of issues that it might have. If you leak oil, how often you have to add oil, maybe you burn through coolant. That'll keep you on top of those issues and keep you from ruining your motor. But back to batteries, there's a few different kinds. Something else that's really important to know about vehicle batteries, there's a few different kinds of batteries. Some batteries are really high end and more expensive when you go to the parts store, the premium batteries. They're actually different. This one's lithium iron. The ones in the parts stores might be absorbed glass mat batteries. And those are for vehicles with uh, a lot of electronics in them, newer vehicles that are just really electronic laden. Then you've got your typical flooded lead battery. On some old batteries, you can actually service the battery by checking the water level where you fill it up with distilled water. Um, most batteries nowadays are sealed, so you really don't have to worry about that. But if you do have a battery that's serviceable, that's something you could do once every six months or once a year is check the water level in your battery as well. Uh, make sure that it's clean when you put stuff together. If there's already a little bit of corrosion there when you put the terminals together, it's just gonna grow more corrosion in that spot. You can put some dielectric grease, some silicone paste or something like that on the terminals afterwards, even a protective spray. But those sprays are a little bit harder to remove if you ever have to service the battery. Well, when it comes to deep cycle batteries, something that's important to know is you can discharge these to their full capacity. So you could hook up some sort of uh, power using device to these, uh, you know, like whenever you turn off your car, all the lights are supposed to go off. And if you have a light that stays on, it kills your battery. Well, these won't get killed if you leave a light plugged into them. They'll just get drained all the way and you can refill them back up. But vehicle batteries are different. That's why they will die. They're not made to be over discharged. So that's something to be aware of. Don't overcharge your batteries and don't over discharge them. If they fall below 10 volts, they're really not designed for that. It could cause serious permanent damage. And hand in hand with that are extreme weather conditions. When it comes to extreme weather conditions, you really have to take care of your vehicle's battery. In the cold weather, make sure that you're starting it once a week or every other week if your battery is getting to the end of its life. Make sure you don't leave it sitting around in cold weather with a low charge. That could definitely ruin your battery. Same thing with too high of temperatures. Make sure that you're not exposing your battery to extreme high heats, but that's not as common as cold. And then batteries, uh, so, you know, there's some batteries with electronics built into them. This has reverse polarity protection, where if you hook something up incorrectly to this battery, it would blow a fuse on the inside before it did damage to the battery. You would still have to dissect the top of this battery and replace the fuse, but it is a protection built in. Uh, flooded lead acid batteries don't have that. So if you've ever seen somebody like hook up their jumper cables backwards and cause a fire or a bunch of smoke and the jumper cables to melt, um, that's something that you have to be aware of with your battery as well. There is a positive and there is a negative. If you're not sure, be very careful. The negative usually goes straight to the vehicle chassis. It's the ground. So if you're not sure, you can always hook the black, which is the negative up to the vehicle chassis. And then you can hook the red. And most jumper cables will have an indicator up to the positive of the vehicle battery. And for that reason, I recommend using jump boxes instead of jumper cables. 
any nice jump box like this one is going to have reverse polarity protection built into it. As long as you don't hit that boost button, it's not going to let you hook things up backwards. Not only will that damage your battery, it could seriously damage your vehicle's electronics as well. Well, that's all I've got to say about batteries today. If I left something out, let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure you check out the next one here, and make sure you're subscribed. You can donate at the links in the description if you want to help out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next episode of Roadside Rescue. That's a job well done.